chance to listen or watch uh, the webinar on Summit Lodge Intensives. My name is Claire Fearman Madison, and I'm the clinical director at Evoke Summit Lodge in Park City, Utah. And I am hoping to just share a little bit about myself and what we do and why we do it. I think it's a funny feeling to get to know somebody via podcast or webinar. So I've put some links on here to my Vogue bio, a podcast I was a guest on, um, and then a blog about our intensive. So you can get to know me in a little bit of a different way. So you are seeing me in a very vulnerable moment showing up on a webinar. This is not a live event. So just know if you have any questions, you can always email me. It's Claire at Evoke Summit Lodge. That's not right. Claire at evoketherapy.com and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. So we are going to get started in a little bit of a different way. If you're in a place to do so, like not driving right now, but if you're at home um, or in your office, I will invite you to get a piece of paper and sit somewhere quietly and alone. So I'll give you just a second to do that. At the top of the slide, and if you can't see it, I'll read it to you. I added the quote, close both eyes to see with the other. And this can be interpreted however you need to interpret it. But in one line, this is what we do at the Summit Lodge. And this is what I hope to give you a little taste of. We allow our chatty minds to slow down and go inward to really hear our truth and to share our truth with somebody else. So I'm going to walk you through closing both eyes and allowing you to see with the other. This meditation, and don't, don't worry if you're not a meditator, it's okay. This is lighter. This is different. This is easy. But this med is a meditation that was adapted from Tara Brock. Um, Tara Brock is a psychotherapist that is just the queen of all things meditation and guided imagery. So go ahead and become comfortable where you're seated, getting all of your wiggles out. And I will say if you're driving and listening, what I'd invite you to do is with your eyes open and with your focus, you can still check in with yourself in a really mindful and intentional way while being really safe. So if you're in a good place and you've wiggled until you've settled, go ahead and close your eyes. Take about 15 to 30 seconds to scan your body from your head all the way down to your toes, recognizing any emotion that you might be taking with you. And this part's just recognition. You're not doing anything else. It's, oh, hello, I have some grief in my chest or butterflies, which means anxiety in my stomach. I'm only asking you to recognize. taking 30 seconds to say hello to what's going on within you. Once you've identified a feeling or two, I want you to allow, so give permission for that feeling just to be there. It might be really comfortable if you're feeling excited about something. It might be really uncomfortable if you're going through something painful today. And we're just giving ourselves permission to have that feeling with us. We're such fixers. We don't have to be. So allow for some curiosity in this moment. Our next piece is when we get to investigate. Where is this feeling in our body? Is it heavy? Is it light? Is it intense? Is it hard to notice a feeling? This is when you get to become the detective of you. Just notice without changing. So we recognize, we've allowed, we've investigated. We should have a pretty good handle of what it is that we're feeling. It doesn't have to be big, great, or full of all this like amazing wisdom. It's just a feeling and where it is. And the last piece is the magic piece. The last piece is where you get to place both hands on your heart if you're able to do so. 
ask yourself something that we very rarely ask. And it's, what is it that I need? This is the piece where we get to nurture the feeling. Nurture does not mean fix. Nurture just means we get to feel. So when I say nurture, I usually mean something like, do I need a hug from my partner? Do I need a really good meal? Do I need a glass of water? Do I need a laugh? Do I want to get popcorn and a Coke at a movie and just sit there? You don't have to think so hard about this piece. This is the piece where we're teaching ourselves compassion. I feel this, and I get to nurture it with that. I'm not trying to change it. I'm loving myself enough to meet myself where I'm at. Once you've come up with a piece or two of how you would nurture yourself, I want you to slowly open your eyes and write those things down. Maybe I'm feeling sad, I can really need a glass of water. I'm feeling anxious, I want to call my best friend. Just my mom, I want to hug. Just write down two or three sentences so you remember that for 30 seconds of your life, you felt something and you nurtured it without any judgment. Or if the judgment came, you just noticed it and kept on. I would invite you to dig a little bit deeper on your own later, maybe doing a full journal entry on this. But what I just walked you through is a basis for what we do at Evoke Summit Lodge. We allow you to recognize and allow and be and nurture. It doesn't have to be a big part of this. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. So let's get into a little bit of that. Who comes to Summit Lodge? Um, we have participants from all over, which is so amazing, from Utah to the full United States to Canada and the UK and I hope that that just continues to grow and expand so anyone gets to come. Our Finding You, uh, which is our flagship program, is just for 18 and up. It's better that way and there's just seven of you in that group. So I get asked all the time, well I'm not really falling apart, do I need to come to this? And the answer is no. You don't have to be falling apart to go do your own work, to go be seen, to go be heard. You just get the opportunity to dig a little bit deeper. So ideally, intensives are those who are just ready and willing to do some work, whatever that may be. And we do address trauma. We do address grief, anxiety, depression, codependency, adult children of alcoholics. We get to see all of that. But you don't have to check a box to be able to come and do your work. I want that to be so, so clear. You might not even know why you walk through our doors. It's just a feeling that you have. And so I invite you to show up. Okay, so this is the part that I need to work through some myths with you. Experiential therapy seems to really wig people out. That is the core of Summit Lodge. But if you just did that meditation with me, that was experiential therapy. It's not as big and crazy as it sounds. And often it can be softer than talk therapy. And what I mean is this, oftentimes in talk therapy, we're using this part of our brain, that cool, logical part that feels like it knows everything, but it actually doesn't. Because where our pain lies within us, there is no language center, and experiential therapy gets there. Yes, experiential therapy might come through art or music or movement or role plays, which I think can sound a bit intimidating, um, and it might feel that way. Sometimes it feels that way the first day, the first few minutes. It feels big, it feels unknown, and it feels scary. But unknown and scary does not have to mean bad. And so I found this Walt Disney quote, and I absolutely love it. The way to get started is to stop talking and to start doing. Because sometimes our language cannot solve our problems. But our doing can, our becoming can. So... Experiential therapy is action-oriented. There's more movement than words sometimes. There's more drawing something with your non-dominant hand than explaining something. 
that it gives us permission to be ourselves in a whole different way because we're being heard in a whole different way. What I watch happen is when someone role plays for somebody else, they get just as much work done. Meaning if I invited you to play my spouse in part of my therapy, you might gain something from that. You might see your spouse's pain in a whole different way. You might care about me as a person in a whole different way. And that's our work, is getting to show up and investigate. I'll give you just a second to take a look at this, and I'll read it out loud if you're not able to be looking at your screen right now. So experiential therapy is action-oriented. We use engaging activities such as role plays, art, acting, and music to guide the process. And I'm being intentional and not telling you exactly what that is. I think it takes the magic out of it. If I told you, well, this is the first thing we do and this is the second, then you get to plan. You get to use this part of your brain to start. Well, if I said this, then it might look like that, and I don't want to go there. So I know I'm not giving you a lot of information. I'm asking you to just blindly trust me for what this is. It feels different than talk therapy because it reaches into a place where the, it, there is no language. You'll have the opportunity to access a different way of processing painful emotions and events, connect to your creativity, even if you don't think you have any, and really get to know your inner voice, not just the inner voice that might chatter at you at how bad you are, you should have done something different. Maybe the inner voice that has wisdom and love for you that you totally forgot about. So I want to go back to the piece where I talk about getting to process in a different way. So oftentimes we ask you to bring your most painful events to the table because those painful events, even if they happen at age four or eight or 18, are typically impacting you today. But you might not have the dots to connect how or why. And it might be bizarre ways that they're showing up, okay? So if I had a painful event at 18, which is true for me, um, at 32, I become fearful of things that I don't think I need to be fearful of. Like, why is the dark scary? And then when I can go back and reprocess that, I connect the dots. And it doesn't mean the scary goes away. I just become less reactive. I become whole. I learn how to take care of myself. That works. So we reprocess in a very safe, nurturing, quiet way. And once you reprocess some of that pain, which I know might sound really, really, really scary, every day seems different in tiny ways. I wanted to add this to close up the experiential piece. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. There's my doorbell, I'm so sorry. Um, the piece that I want you to know in this is, um, I think talk therapy works. And I see my talk therapist all the time. She's impactful and wonderful for me. But those moments that I remember in therapy, <laughs> Those moments that I remember in therapy are when I have a sensory and a physical experience, and I'm more likely to make significant changes after that experience, okay? I'm not telling you talk therapy doesn't work. It does. But if I feel stuck in talk therapy, if I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm repeating myself, or am I on the same merry-go-round, and I need to step off, that's when experiential therapy gets to give me a gift um, that I might haven't received. So it's a different perspective. It's a different feeling. Okay, so I posted a clip from my blog to tell you about a day in the life. I promise I'm not going to read it. I just wanted you to have a full paragraph of a day in the life. So this is the second question I get most of all. What do we do all day? And it's so funny what people think happens at these events. Like we're not smudging everybody with sage and singing and dancing. I guess it could happen if you wanted it to, but it probably isn't going to happen. Um, we try to create the safest, most serene environment that we possibly can, and having that at a house in Park City really doesn't hurt at all. 
So you come and stay at our lodge where we provide the lodging and all of your meals and we really take care of you. You don't have technology. I know that might be shocking, um, but we take your phones if you're willing. We ask for them. It is your choice. You're an adult willingly coming to our program, but we ask that you disconnect by handing over your phones and any other technology. So you just get to be with you and me and the other facilitators. So after you've turned into your technology, you get to know your group, which is likely six other people, but we usually cap it at seven. And um, we start our work. So a full day starts at about seven or eight with breakfast and coffee um, and a really slow start. We start with an easy meditation and talking about mindfulness. And then we do a big chunk of group work, the group process. Because I know you might be thinking, can I just do this alone? And yes, you can. We do private intensives. But having the group has proven to be more effective than individual therapy. Group therapy, family therapy, individual therapy are how I see it in order of most effective for life change. So yeah, it is totally uncomfortable to, to be there with people that you don't know and be vulnerable with people that you don't know. But I promise it goes away. I've said that twice, so I must really mean it. I think I get that a lot. So you start with mindfulness and meditation. We do our group process, which, yes, I'm going to be vague about what that is, but it is all experiential based with some psychoeducation. So some, we want you to go home with some tools. Uh, you have a big break for lunch, and during that time, you can hike, you can meditate, you can nap. Uh, you get to do things that you might not get to do in day-to-day -day life. I'm a mom of two little kids. I don't really get to read. You could read. You could just chat, you could draw, you get to tap into places that in 2019 we aren't offered to tap into so often. After lunch, we come back and we do another big chunk of group therapy uh, and likely some sort of psychoeducation. It might be communication skills, uh, it might be mindfulness, it might be um, how to do relationships, which is a big one. Um, but we want you to be able to have some of that talk therapy and come back into your brain before we leave you for the night. Um, each night will be some sort of fun activity. It might be an, a movie that we've really intentionally chosen. It might just be games and connecting with those folks that you've come to know and love. Or you can say, I think I just need to process this. I'm going to go hang out in my room or read or whatever that looks like. So that is the most vague day in the life at Summer Lodge. So we offer three different programs. The first, the one that I really focus on today is Finding You. That's our seven person group where there's a therapist and a co-facilitator as well as someone that takes care of your hospitality, which is lodging, food, you only eat Fruit Loops for breakfast, all of that stuff that gets taken care of. That program runs from a Wednesday evening until a Sunday afternoon. So we recognize we're asking um, folks to take off time from work or time away from their family. We know what that is. Um, and it is a gift that you get to give yourself. And I don't take that lightly. I know what it takes to leave family job to go take care of myself. So that is finding you. Our professional intensives are for anybody in the field um, that they might consider themselves a helper in any way. So right now that is mostly therapists, business developers, um, clinicians in any capacity. We invite you to join us in our professional intensives. That is the same format Wednesday to Sunday. And then we have private intensives. Private intensives can be for families, individuals, or couples, and you get to design your program. Oftentimes folks want to do that because it feels safer and it feels like, okay, well, I just know what I need. I'm going to go in there and get my work done. And sometimes that is the case. And we love to do private intensives. But what I will tell you is it is a gift to come to a finding you before you go into your family work. Allow other people that are not related to you, that don't live in your house, to hold space for you. It is magic. It is truly feeling loved for just being you. So if you have questions about those specific programs, please, please email me. Okay, I'm gonna go 
So that was our overview of what we do at Evoke Summit Lodge, and that is in Park City, Utah. Uh, and again, I'm Claire. I'm the clinical director there. Please contact me with any questions or thoughts that you have. Feel free to read the blog that I posted at the beginning, where you can even see some folks that um, have commented about their experience there. Um, I would love to connect with you. You can follow us on Instagram at Evoke Summit Lodge, and you get to see a little bit more of the ins and outs of what we do. Here are some other resources, podcast, Twitter, Instagram, for all of Evoke Therapy programs as a whole. And here we have our upcoming intensives. Um, February is actually full, but we do have March, April, and May on the calendar. This is also listed on our website and on our Instagram. So this is not your one opportunity to see this or to think about it. So thank you so, so much for showing up and hearing what I have to say about our intensives. I feel so strongly about what we do and what we've created to just allow folks to come and be seen. And if that's all we give you in our time with you, that you feel heard and loved by us, then I can live with that. Thank you so much.